We start today by talking about an ESPN report from Jeremy Fowler. Fowler, who has been all over the Deshaun Watson situation, dating back to when the initial trade request was made over a year ago now. Jeremy Fowler noted that Deshaun Watson has begun evaluating different teams for the Texans to potentially trade him to. Remember, Deshaun, of course, has the no-trade clause. And among those teams, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And how about this for a surprise team? The Minnesota Vikings apparently piqued Deshaun Watson's interest. Fowler noted that a source told him that Watson is still in the early evaluation process, but he's looking for the right blend of offensive system, coaching talent, and most importantly, the chance to win. If you look at the Vikings, they obviously have Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook, and they are a team with a brand-new head coach that runs an offensive system that we just watched both coach coaches use in the Super Bowl and, of course, Sean McVay and Zach Taylor. The new coach for the Minnesota Vikings is the Rams OC, Kevin O'Connell, who is officially announced today. Cody, let's start with you. What do you make of Minnesota being a possible Deshaun Watson destination? I don't care as much about the team as much as I care about the other part of Fowler's report. Deshaun Watson worrying about a chance to win, worrying about who the coach is, worrying about the offensive system they run and the talent on the team. Those are all advantages over which part of the beach am I going to take a sweet Instagram picture with and what caption am I going to slap on it when I'm in Miami? Hmm. That's the important part of this. We'll get to the teams and how much they make sense and what those teams can offer, and we'll do all that in a second. But if Deshaun Watson is legitimately, and there's no BS from his camp, if he's legitimately worried about playing somewhere where he has a chance to win, worried about who the coach is, worried about the talent on that team and in that organization, and worried about the offensive system, then this vastly, vastly opens up the amount of places that the Texans could potentially send Deshaun Watson. Yes, he could obviously disqualify these various places for any of those four reasons that we laid out, and we may disagree with him disqualifying some of those places, but it opens it up from a handful of teams to, my goodness, close to a double-digit amount of teams. That was a very, very good sign when Deshaun Watson holds a legitimate amount of power with the no-trade clause mm-hmm. that he was considering football and not where he can take a sweet Instagram picture, okay? Because football was not the primary reason he wanted to go to Miami, in my opinion. I believe that was very much lifestyle and football. If football is the main decision-maker for Deshaun Watson, my goodness, the list of teams is damn near endless. That's it. I mean, we've talked about it a lot on this show. It feels like there are a number of teams that are just a quarterback away from being legit Super Bowl contenders. Maybe you throw Minnesota in that mix, but you've got teams like Pittsburgh. You've got a team like Cleveland. You've got Denver. You've got Indianapolis. You've got Tennessee. I mean, the list goes on and on with teams that feel like, okay, if we just add an impact game changer at quarterback, then we're going to be right there. We're going to be the Rams of 2022. So, yeah, hearing this report, and look, it's just one report. We haven't heard it directly from Deshaun just yet, but I agree with Cody. Hearing this report that football seems to be priority number one for Deshaun Watson seemingly opens the door a lot more than it was last year. The only thing I disagree with what you said there, Cody, Miami was a winning team two years ago when Deshaun won them. They went 10-6 and six with Tua and Fitz as their quarterbacks. This past year was a mess. They started 1-7, and seven, but even they, they finished 9-8, and eight, and obviously Brian Flores was looked upon as a really good coach. There's no doubt the lifestyle of Miami, though, plays a part in wanting to go there. Look, Minnesota would be all about winning, and if you're Deshaun Watson, maybe the best thing for you is to go somewhere where you can win right away and kind of, I don't want to say, erase your past of what he's allegedly been accused of, but if he goes somewhere and starts winning again, the conversation will shift to that and not, oh, what a a bad guy this guy is away from the field. Because Deshaun Watson is not going to be going to any team in a big market and getting just a boatload of endorsement deals right away. He lost all his endorsement sponsors when the lawsuit started to pile up a year ago. So Minnesota makes sense because also, yeah, it's Minnesota and it's cold and, and all that, but they play indoors. Deshaun Watson getting a chance to play indoors in that offense in a division that if Aaron Rodgers leaves the Packers has never been more wide open. If Minnesota's truly in play, they make a lot of sense because they have a pick in the first round that at least is in the top 15. Minnesota right now is the 12th overall pick. I mean, Deshaun was given seemingly the thumbs up to a one win at the time Dolphins team near the trade deadline last year who'd lost seven straight. And so now it's definitely about, hey, let's win. Let's play good football. And ultimately the Dolphins, I'm sure he felt like had some talent. He could have turned that thing around. And they did turn it around even without Deshaun Watson. The Minnesota thing is fascinating because it would be one thing if he was like, well, yeah, you know, like, I want to go to Denver because I like their talent 
and I like the city. Like, Minnesota is not a free agency destination place for, like, a place to live. But when you look at what Minnesota has, one of the best young wide receivers in football, one of the best veteran wide receivers in football, one of the better running backs in football, they've invested in that offensive line over the past couple of years, and that defense, you would think, would get a little bit better if the offense got significantly better, which is what Deshaun Watson would bring as an upgrade over Kirk Cousins. I mean, from a football standpoint, and a guy running an offense and a system that just was on both sides of the 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 field in the Super Bowl, what could Deshaun, what else could he want? I mean, the only thing that doesn't quite check the box is, yeah, Minnesota's probably a middle-of-the-pack city compared to some of these other NFL cities. But for a football, seemingly good head coach, Offensive system that he's never played in that he would absolutely dominate in mm. and a ton of talent. I mean, can't you just see Deshaun going up and down the field in purple doing the gritty with Double J <laughs> after a touchdown? I mean, come on. I like you calling Minnesota a city. I appreciate that. Yeah. Minneapolis and St. Paul, you get two cities in one. Oh, maybe that's appealing. Forgive me to Deshaun Watson. Cody should have known that man. He was at the Super Bowl a couple of years ago when it was the coldest I've ever been in my entire life. I mean, I think Chicago's a state, so I'm cool with you calling Minnesota a city. I'm perfectly fine with that. My question is, would the Vikings be fully on board with this? Is Deshaun Watson a clear upgrade over Kirk Cousins? Yes, but new coach. The Vikings have invested a lot in Kirk Cousins. Like, do they try to run it back with offensive-minded coach? Because Mike Zimmer's been the head man in Minnesota forever. We know he's a defensive guy. They've tried to rotate a couple of different OCs to make things work with Cousins, and obviously it hasn't worked the way that they wanted it to. But do they try with Kirk Cousins, with all the weapons that you talked about, Cody, and this offensive, innovative mastermind at head coach, do they try with him before giving up multiple firsts moving on from Kirk Cousins, and doing what they have to do to bring in Deshaun Watson. I'm not sure what Minnesota's interest is at this very moment. Well, if you believe some of the reports, part of the reason O'Connell was so well thought of and so highly thought of in the process for Minnesota is he was very on board with the Kirk Cousins situation and the reality that that's their quarterback right now and he's only under contract for one more season and O'Connell apparently was very pro-Cousins in that interview I would also tell you that he could walk right into that building and say, yeah, Kirk Cousins feels a lot like Jared Goff and Deshaun Watson feels a lot like Matt Stafford. Don't you guys want to win a Super Bowl? And, like, I mean, he just watched it happen. He just watched the quarterback upgrade be significant and his team go to the Super Bowl. He coached it. Yeah, but what if he argues the other way around? We did this as a segment yesterday. Who's the next Matt Stafford? Couldn't you argue it's Kirk Cousins? Sure, yeah. No, I mean, you you absolutely could. Use that, what, top 15 pick? I'm not exactly sure off the top 12th of my head. 12th overall. 12th overall. Use that 12th overall pick on... Uh, an offensive lineman or a defensive weapon or something uh, to help the team right away and try to get the most out of Kirk Cousins in that first year and then make a decision on Cousins at the end of the year or maybe during the season if you feel like it's going well? Absolutely. Absolutely. No, there definitely needs to be buy-in from Minnesota because they've got a situation right now. But if they could find a way to get a landing spot for Kirk Cousins, because if they're getting Deshaun Watson, there's a bunch of teams that aren't getting Deshaun Watson. And you're not going to keep Kirk Cousins and Deshaun Watson. Mm-hmm. So if you could find a landing spot for Cousins and be getting Watson, I mean, you'd have the entire North excited about the Purple folks. Here's what I would hope. Kirk Cousins is not coming back in a trade with Deshaun Watson. Like the Vikings trade Kirk somewhere else to another quarterback needy team because I don't think Kirk Cousins makes any sense for where the Texans are at right now. I'd much rather just give Davis Mills – another year, and then worry about what he is or who the future quarterback is after the 2022 season. Yeah, if Kirk Cousins wasn't able to win with the talent around him in Washington or the talent around him in Minnesota, ain't no way he's going to win with the talent on the current Houston Texans. He's 33 years old. He'll turn 34 during next season or maybe right before next season starts. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. Kirk Cousins doesn't do anything for me. Potential three-team trade, though. Sure. That could work. I want to get to that after the break. I like that. Okay. I like that. There's also some teams I feel like if Deshaun's really about the football, I don't know if Minnesota's the spot either. More on Deshaun, which teams make the most sense. If Minnesota's actually in play, what are the Texans getting back in that type of deal? 713-780. ESPN's the phone number. Stream is still down, so get the Twitch if you normally listen on the app or the website, twitch.tv slash ESPN. Nine seven five. More on this coming up. The wheelhouse with you till seven o'clock right here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5.